Vuk and Kartian, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much for the introduction. Thank you very much for having us. We are a Roman, so our German is not so great, so we're going to do it, try to do it in English. Our English either is not so good. We are good at French. Um, but let's get right into it. Great, fantastic. So we're going to dive into the future of retail banking and trying to understand how the customer relationship can be completely changed through generative AI. But before we go into it, we just want to take you 30 seconds to tell you a little bit more about Visium. So Visium is a company that was born from the EPFL in 2018 and that strives to empower organizations to innovate and become market leader through the leverage of data and artificial intelligence. From 2018, we grew quite a lot. So today, we are a pan-European organization present in three different countries with offices in Lausanne, Zurich, Sarajevo, and Valencia. And we have a lot of Visumi, did a lot of projects. You can see all the logos. And if you have any questions, we'll be around there so you can just ask us right away. At Visium, we not only try to leverage AI to help our clients, we have been very focused recently with generative AI, and that's what we'll talk about in the next seconds. Thanks, Luc. Mic test, does it work? Perfect. Hi, everyone. So, Gen AI. Well, we've been using it uh, for quite some days. I believe uh, all of you have tested the ChatGPT and it's already improving your life. It's clearly an innovative solution, right? We, will, we can all agree on this. But as all innovations and innovative solutions, at some point, it will come to an end. At some point, it will come to a time where there is no added value of following this S-curve that is famous or, let's say, related to a lot of you know, innovations. But we at Visium, based on the projects we do and the different industries we work with, we believe that Gen AI is really at the beginning of this paradigm shift. We believe that Gen AI is barely scrapping the surface of its transformative potential, standing at the dawn of a new era, which will enable to create, redefine what we call efficiency, what we call decision-making, what we call creativity, but also a new era to unlock unprecedented value that is prop proper to the AI. So, having said that, what does it mean for banks, for us, for this event, for for the banking sector. Let's try to first talk about the history of AI in banking and how it affected uh, the different uh, departments. A couple of years ago, we started implementing what we call today traditional AI, which is basically traditional machine learning, deep learning. These systems were kind of hybrid systems that are merging uh, different predefined rules um, using data in spreadsheets or databases. Um, it was, let's say, already bringing a lot of value. It, it, is, or it is bringing still value with this. But compared to Gen AI, I believe, well, we, at Vision, we believe it's nothing, nothing comparable. Gen AI will completely transform the entire industry, and we believe there will be much more that we can do. What it means? It means that from GPT-3.4, OpenAI-01, Agentic AI, it will kind of create, it is already creating a lot of new markets and a lot of new business model innovations. But tomorrow, it will disrupt the entire industry, disrupt existing markets. And what we call banking for all, augmented with an AI, will enable to augment everybody, at the, whether it's the banks, whether it's the customers, and we will have much higher adoption. So we talked about how it's going to revolutionize everything, but let's be a, a bit more pragmatic about how it means, how it means to redefine the operation of banking with AI. I must say, it's not about this new technology. It's not about being an involving technology. It's more about creating this new business model. It's more about breaking these boundaries of decision-making, efficiency, 
effectiveness, creativeness. And if we focus on what can we do pragmatically, what use case can we can do, there is a ton of this, right? Whether from, from the financial AI uh, augmented uh, advisor, uh, whether it's fraud detection, there is plenty of it. But we need to select, we need to prioritize, and there's two important criteria. First, impact on, on the efficiency and effectiveness, but more importantly, the people pay, paying the bank, so impact on the customer, impact on customer engagement. And if we, if we do this exercise, we realize that there are three use cases that are really close and accessible, well, at least one of them really accessible and two that are more visionary, but we believe are going to transform the next few months and years, 2025, 2026, and so on. These are the workforce copilot, so basically automated, automating repetitive tasks, but more like general tasks, writing emails, um, summarizing, etc. Basically, it's ChatGPT, but more like implementing all your processes. And two others, which are document automation and call uh, automated, let's say, call center, or let's say intelligent call center automation, which we're going to dive into it now. So the last time that you called your banker uh, or for any questions, you forgot your whole pin or, or any questions, how much time does it really took the banker to answer or the call center to answer? Isn't it quite frustrating? Isn't it quite cumbersome? You need to call between 8 and okay, 9, hour, nine and, and, and 5 p.m. Um, it's kind of the reducing the engagement of customers, right? And imagine if tomorrow we can automate this end-to-end. -end. Imagine that you interact with a bot that will detect the intent of your query if you want uh, uh, to, to know uh, your, your, the, new, the new PIN or if you want to sign a contract and so on. You will have a bot server that will detect the intent. Then you will have a query search and a decision engine that will kind of work together to fetch the data both on the CRMs and the ERP of the bank, but also based on the historical um, uh, conversation with, with the customer. And finally, you will have an LLM that will frame everything, make it beautiful, and make it like it's a human. That's the vision. And we do think it's quite accessible and quite close. I know, uh, like if we, if, we, if we compare to what was said in a few minutes ago in one of the presentation, it's true that we can question ourselves and we can ask ourselves and say whether the customer would like to talk to a bot. But what if that bot is available 24 seven? Isn't that a great, great advantage and kind of trespassing the frustration we can have to talk about bots? But what if we go one more step ahead and we kind of change the voice of the bot with the voice of your banker? Or more, better, cherry on the cake, a more enjoyable voice. Because I don't know about you guys, but my banker, I really don't appreciate talking to him. So let's say this is a kind of a general use cases for intelligent call center. Another one would be uh, document uh, automation. So we've seen the view from the customer side, making the customer's life easier, more engaging, etc. What about the other side, banking side, making the process faster, making like, suppose you have a customer who wants to open a checking account. You have quite some steps. G gathering the documents from the customers, reading through it, extracting a lot of data. Then you need to ask the customers to fill in some missing information, to send some missing documents. And then finally, you need to make the decision. So quite some, there are quite some steps. It takes some time. It's, it's quite uh, lengthy in the, on the banking side, on the onboarding team. Same thing. What if we can automate all of this? What if you have a platform tomorrow where the customer can upload a document and then you have OCR algorithms, AI capabilities that extract any, everything from the documents, whether it's handwritten, typed, or whatever, in any languages, that does the facial recognition by itself, uh, that kind of structure all this unstructured content and give on a plateau, on a, on a plateau to uh, the 
uh, the, the, the banking uh, employees, uh, the ability to have everything structured and simple, uh, and then the, the banker can make uh, the final call, which is super important. We always need uh, human uh, intervention. Now, if we talk about how we see the future, we do believe that future is agentic AI. What does it mean? It means creating agents that are capable to make the decisions by itself with the supervision of human. But there are three points that is key to agentic AI. Autonomy, being able to take and make decisions and take action independently, no matter the situation, but for the scope and objective given. Adaptability is to adapt to a different customer, to a different problem, to what was discussed in the past, and the ability to learn over time. These three points are key for agents, and it's going to be the future. Well, at least that's what we believe. And the key difference with Gen AI, just let's clarify, Gen AI is about creating content, new content, text, audio, uh, code, etc. And agents is about making a decision, doing an action by itself, always with some minimal human supervision, but on a controlled setting. And if we dive deeper on what an agent is built of, it's built of three components. You receive inputs, kind of a perception module that treats text, that treats uh, voices, speech, uh, et cetera, kind of processing all the inputs. Then you have the intelligent part, the cognition part, that is using the data, using the the, the, the model and making the decision. And finally, you have the output. You need to take the make the action, take the, make the decision, take the action, and that's the action part. And these are the three building blocks of a single agent. But this is not enough science fiction for us. So what if, instead of having one agent working with one human, we would actually have one human working with an agent orchestrator that will basically take care of its own agent team that will do the different task. So imagine, it will happen very soon, so soon we won't imagine, we will observe it, but that instead of having one agent, we can have one agent that we create other agents in order to streamline different tasks, cut processes down, and have this intelligent automation capable of reasoning. Agents will be everywhere, and they will revolutionize directly or indirectly the customer experience, and we won't even see it as customers, but banks will see it. And there's two types of agents that you can think of. First one, there are those that would be a little bit more industry agnostic or tech agnostic, and they will be more master orchestrator, reporting agents, data collection agents, and so forth and so on. So they will help our tech teams. And then there are the other ones, which are more the specific banking agents that will be able to deal with risk and credit. They will all have some different specializations and departments. And basically, multi-agent systems will automate complex banking operations that you can see here from credit checks to loan approvals to risk management and so forth and so on. And so before uh, uh, we leave you here, we just want to have three different scenarios of three different types of bank in three years. So the first one will see the laggards, those that are not investing today in AI, that don't believe Gen AI is something. When we talk about agentic AI, they think it's going to be a joke and it will never happen. The second ones will be the early AI adopters. They will start to invest today. And interestingly enough, in three years, they maybe might be in an interesting situation. And finally, we'll see the bold innovators, those that might put a little bit too much effort and resources into it, uh, making quite a lot of mistakes along the way, but that will be able to yield some interesting truths. And so the laggards will be a relic of the past. They will lose a lot of market share, and the only element of AI that they will actually embed will be some customer chatbots from some basic queries about just some Q&A and so forth and so on. That's one scenario. That's the first one that today we can say in three years we will definitely see, at least in Switzerland. The second one, we'll see the early AI adopters. Here, banks will be a trusted partner, where each customer will have the kind of personal banker. It will not be that intelligent, right? It will just be able to tell you if you're spending too much money, um, how are you planning, and it will really help you there. I have a wedding coming up in May. I hope that I could be, have a, a companion like this one that just tells me, hey, book, don't spend too much tonight on your food and your drinks. You have something coming up, be ready. And maybe a, an image of my girlfriend pops up angrily to tell me, what are you doing? You are crazy, don't pay that extra round. Um, and they will have some agentic AI there. And finally, 
And last, right in the same time as the music, we'll have the bold innovators. And the bold innovators will be able to create hyper-intelligent companions that not only will accompany you in your day-to-day -day and put pictures of your girlfriend when you spend too much money, they will actually be able to plan. They will be able to tell you. They will be an advisor. They will never replace exactly your banker because you always would like this human warmth and this human connection. But when it's 3 a.m. and I can't sleep because I don't have enough money for my wedding, my agent will be available and will tell me how I can actually get there and will give me this tailored advice. And the banks, some departments will be run by agents and humans will be able to focus on various tasks. So if you want to become bold innovators, we'll be there. Thank you very much.